Welcome back to No Code Devs. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use Zapier to bring in data from any API and then connect it to other apps in the Zapier marketplace. It's super easy and we'll be able to set up an API call in just a few minutes using webhooks by Zapier. Let's dive in and show you how this works. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. What we're gonna do today, just as a recap, is we're gonna connect to a custom API using Zapier webhooks. And then we're gonna send that API data to Google Sheets. You could of course send it wherever you want, but for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna send all of our data to Google Sheets and build out a nice database from the API data that's returned. So we're gonna be using Zapier here. I'm not gonna get started with this yet. I'm gonna first hop over to this website called xylalabs.com. You might wanna check this out. Of course, you can connect to any API, but Xyla is a directory of APIs. You can actually subscribe to individual APIs through Xyla and manage it all in one place. And they have a ton of different APIs from weather APIs to sports, to news, travel, you name it. They've got hundreds of different APIs in their catalog. They make it super easy to test the APIs. You can test it right in the browser to see what kind of objects you get back from the API. You can also run all of the uh, APIs in Xyla uh, in Postman, which is super nice. I'm gonna hop over here to this tab and we're gonna be using just a web metrics API today for this example. Basically, we're gonna get traffic data back from specific websites. And I'm gonna show you how to pull that into Zapier. So this is this specific API. And as I was saying, you can test it right in the browser. So we could put any website in here. They have a default one as CNN. So we'll just stick with that. We have to choose this CAPTCHA test and we can just go ahead and hit test endpoint. So again, really nice that you can test this in the browser and see what kind of data you get back before committing or purchasing the API from Xyla. You can of course, again, use any API that you want, but look at this, we got our response back. We get all kinds of interesting data, like the site name, the description, countries where traffic is coming from. We get the engagement rate, the bounce rate, the historical data for the past three months, the global rank, the country rank, traffic sources broken down by social, referrals, direct, search, top competitors. We get the category that the domain is listed in, and we even get a screenshot of the URL, which is super cool. So this gives us back lots of useful data that we wouldn't be able to necessarily find with a Zapier app because they don't have an API data. So we need to pull this in programmatically using Zapier webhooks. So now that we've found the API that we want to use, again, you can use any API of your choosing. If you're following along and using Xyla Labs, they make it super easy to test the API and get the responses. But once we have this data here, we can scroll back up because we'll need a couple different things here to get this all configured. The first thing that we're going to need is this endpoint. So we can go ahead and actually copy the endpoint right now because we're going to know we're going to need it, but we'll save that for later. So let's hop over to Zapier and start building this workflow. So what we're gonna do here in this example is take a Google Sheet and anytime a domain is added to the Google Sheet, it's gonna trigger this API call and then populate the Google Sheet with data. Let me hop over to my Google Sheets here. And I set up this basic Google Sheet that's called API Demo. And I have some simple columns here, domain name, description, visit, screenshot, and category rank. So really basic, all I've done is set up the headers so what we do is we head back over to Zapier and we want to set up our trigger. What we can search for here is Sheets. We could choose Google Sheets. And what do we want? We want when a new or updated spreadsheet row, we actually want a new spreadsheet row. So let's go ahead and choose that. We'll click continue. We have to choose our account. We'll choose my no code devs account. Hit continue. Now we actually have to choose our spreadsheet. It comes right up here, API demo. If we come back here, we can see our spreadsheet name is called API Demo. So that's the correct one. And then which worksheet do we want? We actually want sheet one. So coming back here, this is just sheet one down here. Okay, perfect. We can go ahead and click continue. Now it's actually gonna test to see if it can find any data. We don't have any data in our spreadsheet. So we wanna go ahead and add a record to see what happens. So let's head back over to our spreadsheet. And we can put in a domain name of nocodedevs.com. Okay, perfect. That's in there now. We can head back to Zapier. We can actually test this trigger again. And this should come back with the new row in our spreadsheet. And it did. So we got a limited amount of data here. We got the row ID, number two, 
the row number two and the domain name, nocodedevs.com. Perfect. That's all that we need. We can move on to the next step. So for this next step, we need our action step to be webhooks. So you can just search for webhooks by Zapier, choose this here. And we have some different options here. We have a, a custom request, which could be like a patch or delete request. We don't need to necessarily know all these terminologies right now, but we have a get request, host request, and a put request. So if you think about what we want here, we want to get data from the API. So we're going to go ahead and choose get. If we go ahead and click continue, there's a lot of fields here that we need to fill out and I'll walk you through each one of them. So if you remember earlier, we needed this URL endpoint. I'm going to copy it again. This is the URL right here that's required. So we're going to go ahead and paste this in. We want to remove the get. So we just have the URL. So it exactly matches what we saw there in Xyla Labs. If we come back here, query string parameter, what we need here is the domain name. So the parameter here, the domain name is required. So this is super simple to set up. All that we're going to do is we're going to put in domain. And we want this to uh, dynamically populate from the domain that we had in our table. So we can actually choose here the domain name, nocodevs.com. So what's going to happen here is it's going to append the domain name nocodevs.com at the end of this URL. And I'll show you how it all works. A couple other things, send as JSON. We're just going to choose no here. JSON key can just be JSON. Unflattened can stay as yes. And then we have to add a couple different headers here. If we come back over here, we will see that we need authorization needs the bearer access key. So if we head back over here, we can add a header called authorization. And what we need is our bearer access key. And I can actually copy this from up here and I will change this um, after this tutorial, but we can paste this here. And what we need to do is actually write the word bearer. And this will change from API to API, but you can test it in Postman to figure out exactly how you need to style these headers to make them work. The other thing that we'll need to add here, so we can add, I'll move myself here. We need to add another header and this just needs to be accept application slash JSON because we're getting returning a JSON object here. So let's go ahead and click continue and let's test this to see if this works. Let's go ahead and test the step. It's actually making this API call right now and we got some data back. So we got the site name nocodevs.com, discover the latest no code software tips and tricks from the pros. So we got our description. We got our top country shares broken down by country with US being number one. We got the bounce rate, the pages per visit, the number of visits uh, this month, the historical visits for the past three months, and so on and so forth. We even got a screenshot. So this is perfect. It looks like our API call worked. And now what we want to do is we want to actually update the spreadsheet with this data that we got from the API. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add another step here. We can search for sheets, Google sheets. And what do we want to do? We want to update a spreadsheet row so we can choose that. We can click continue. Which drive do we want to use? My Google drive, which spreadsheet? the API demo spreadsheet, which worksheet, again, sheet one, and which row do we want to update? We can actually go to custom and we can choose the row ID from the previous step. So as this updates, it's updating the row from the previous step in this trigger, which is step one. So we're updating that specific row ID. So now we've chosen a road ID. We can actually map these fields. So description, we can just go to step two here from get webhooks by Zapier, and we can choose the description here for the site. Let's find it. Here's the description. Perfect. We also want to get the number of visits so we can come here. We can scroll down and we can find the visits, engagement visits. Perfect. We also want to get a screenshot. Same thing. Come all the way down to the bottom, get the large screenshot. 
and then we'll get the category rank as well. So we just have to find that here in this big list. We can actually just search, I think, for rank, category rank. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and click continue, and then we can test our step. Let's head back over to our Google Sheet. And by the time we got here, this has already been updated. So as you can see, we have this data that's populated by the API. We got the site description, we got the number of visits, we got the screenshot and the category rank. Now keep in mind, we only pulled in a little bit of the data from this API. You could pull in as much as you would like or as little as you like, but I kept it to just four pieces of data for this example to keep it simple. Now, once this is done, we can actually publish this zap. It's gonna take a second just to turn on. Our zap is on, which is great. We can rename it to API test. And we can come back here into our spreadsheet. And now every time that we add a new domain, cnn.com, aol.com, mbc.com, google.com, what will happen here is this zap will run in a couple of minutes and populate all of these fields with the different domains that we have. So if we had a list of 200 domains, we could just paste them all in here and then instantly have a really nice database of data for all of these domains. Of course, we're just syncing this to Google Sheets, but you could send it to your CMS, you could send it to a newsletter, you could send it to any front end website or any other app that exists within Zapier. You could even enrich this data further with other APIs and you get the idea, making this a complete database that's completely populated by data from an API. So let's go ahead and just see here if this will populate. We can actually look at our zap runs. Sometimes it takes a couple minutes for the zap to run and this to populate. I don't know if we'll be able to see it in real time here, but as this runs, it'll query the API and populate these rows with the, the data that, that we want. Super cool. In just a couple minutes, we've built a database that updates automatically just from a single line item in our Google Sheet. And hopefully this gives you lots of ideas on what you could do with different APIs uh, to build out data-driven apps and workflows. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments. Like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any other tutorials like this. Thanks so much.